Oh, hey, Kate, it is definitely starting to pump up. You can feel the energy skyrocketing as we go by minute by minute. But this is one of the most important guys today, Tom Brilk, executive director of the BAA. Talk to me about today's race. I mean, this weather, ooh, it's a little touch and go here for some of the runners. What are you hearing so far today from them? Well, I've talked to a couple of runners out here at the Athletes Village so far, and I think the predominant sentiment is that while they would rather not get wet, a little cooler is better than a little hotter. I think a lot of us thought that after the wretched winter that we had this year, the last bitter irony of that winter would be an 88 degree day. It's not that. Um, and I, I really wish there wasn't rain for the runners in part, but really for the volunteers, the heroes of this race every year, 80, more than 8,000 of them who come out to take care of their runners on their course. I want them to be as comfortable as they can be. Obviously, logistics for an event this big, we're talking 30,000 participants, I mean, and a million spectators. What goes into the planning of this, and has anything changed because of the weather forecast today, as far as today's race goes? Well, given the weather and the way that the reports, the forecasts have evolved, Evolved. We have gotten uh, more blankets for people, brought in more ponchos, that sort of thing. But in general, the preparations have to embrace a wide range of possibilities and a wide range of weather. So we have plans in place for hot weather and plans in place for cold weather. Slightly augmented uh, in the last couple of days, but in general, we have to be ready for a New England spring day, which could look like a Panama City summer day or a Nome, Alaska winter day. You never know. You are a veteran of the marathon course itself. You know, you were talking the first one you ran was 100 degrees out there. So uh, when you're looking at what's going on today, can you remember a day that was raining on the runners when they crossed the finish line? What's the worst condition you can remember compared to today? Well, the, the, <clears throat> the rainiest day in recent memory, I think, was probably in 1970. That's a long time ago now. And on that day, in perfectly awful conditions, Ron Hill from Great Britain came and ran a course record. Uh, so cooler temperatures are generally better. Today, unfortunately, there's a headwind against people for the most part. The only good news there is that for the most part, one is running with other people up in front. So the, the wind is not hitting most of the runners directly. That said, wind chill factor is not something you want to be thinking about in a marathon. When we're talking about the eliteness of this field today, are you expecting to see an exciting race out there? Well, it'll become perhaps a more tactical race than before. With a headwind, runners will be even more reluctant than usual to be out in front. Uh, and so it may be that there's a lot of jockeying by runners to stay behind. Nobody will be expecting a fast time. And so it, it could change changed significantly the dynamics of the race. Last year what happened was that Mep Kofleski broke away from the pack. A lot of other faster runners didn't respect that move, let him get away and they couldn't catch him. They've been pretty angry about that for the last year. And so the thought this year was that they would pull out much faster in that men's open race. Now it looks a little bit different. So the weather could present new surprises this year. All right, we'll keep an eye on it. Tom Grook, Executive Director, BAA. Thanks so much for being with us this morning and hope everything goes off as planned today. We'll be watching those runners cross the finish line later on today. Thank you so much. Have a great one.